Welcome back to Sunday Live. Now, we don't often get a chance to sit and take a moment to examine and analyze women in leadership, and particularly since we have women representatives now. Um, welcome to studio, Priscilla Nyokavi. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us to, to really enlighten us as to what's going on in terms of women represented, uh, representation here in Kenya. Um, you came from civil society. That's true. You're, you're an advocate. Yes. Um, so into this world of politics. Um, first of all, tell us what inspired the move for you? Mm -hmm. Well, I was representing poor people at Kituwe Cheshiria for, for a long time. And, and you know, unfortunately, the law doesn't have answers. The law won't give you water. The law won't give you electricity. The law won't give you laptops. Politics can do that. So I realized that um, to sort of influence more the direction of development in our country and the new constitution had come in with new positions, that's why I offered myself for the election. And Nyeri is a great county. They will elect you with or without money. If you have a vision, if you <laughs> promise to work, they will give you the votes. So, so I you don't need Nyeri. to pay the voters no, to vote for you? No, they don't ask you to pay. They okay. don't ask you to pay, at least not for the first time, but they ask you to work. They ask you to do the yes, job, they ask to, to perform. The job, yes. so, so let's look at the role of women representatives. And, and, you know, it goes beyond the usual roles because you are expected now to be the voice of a constituency that is underrepresented. Um, do you think evaluating the performance of yourself and your colleagues that you have adequately done that for the past just over a year? Uh, well, it's a bit early to, to, to rate us. Really? Sort of all leaders say that. Uh, more than and a the, year later? It's a new constitution. The, the first year is a year of election, so a bit of it goes into swearing in and into settling down. So it wasn't until about July that we got into committees and into, into serious budget work and all that. But that's, that's not an excuse for us. We have actually reviewed our own performance and thought that we want to take up thematic issues. We want to take a thematic issue of health. We want to take up gender-based violence. We want to take up anti-FGM work. We want to take up devolution in our counties, how are women uh, integrating in devolution in our county. So this first year we will ask that we don't get judged too harshly. We have uh, come into parliament, we are settling down now, we are completely settled. In this year too, we are promising a lot more hard work than what we did last year. We will come back to, to the work you're doing. I'm fascinated that you actually have key areas mm -hmm. that you're focusing on. Um, but let's get some views that are coming in uh, from our viewers. You're sharing your views, 22422 uh, is the SMS number. and. Um, this one is from Kinua in Reverend Kinua in Embu. He says, um, yes, they are endangered. Our question, sorry, our question was, are women representatives adequately uh, representing, serving the, 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 their role was the question. And there it is, are women representatives adequately serving their role? Yes, 61%. That's very Fair interesting. No, 39%. So let's read some of your SMSs. So Reverend Kinua, as I said, in Embu says, yes, sadly, they are an endangered species at the mercy of male chauvinism. Um, but this one from Mudara in Nairobi disagrees. No, most of women representatives are failing Kenya. Uh, somebody else says, uh, this is from Oyu uh, Frederick in Oyugi's town, Homa Bay County. Yes, as much as women reps may be slower in kick-starting the fulfillment of their roles, when they pick up, they are more sustainable. But somebody else, uh, Samson in Kisumu County says, no, women are getting drunk by power. Given a chance, he says, I can name several powerful women who are drunk with power. So let's, you can see, um, the different views coming in. Certainly it seems to be, uh, the, the impression is that women representatives are making a change. But many have come in really um, greenhorns to this world of politics. Mm -hmm. Do you think capacity needs to be created in terms of understanding the roles that they play? Well, the lucky thing is that all of us are greenhorns, the men as well. Mm -hmm. This is a new constitution, it's a new dispensation, it's a new president. So actually, if it's a question of being greenhorns, then a lot of us are greenhorns. Half the assembly is really new people, almost like 70, 80 percent. Mm -hmm. A lot of senators are new, a lot of uh, members of parliament are new, so everybody is new. And it's a new game plan because of the new constitution. But then the women representatives, what we are doing with our Association of Kenya Women Parliamentary uh, Members, is ensuring that we have capacity. And one of the things that has hit us the most is that women get judged harshly. Uh, if a woman does something and a man does the same thing, then the woman is going to get a lot more harsh uh, punishment. Because if you look at men, I don't think they are performing. Look at the politics that we have right now. You see the opposition dancing, you see the coalition, the Jubilee coalition to which I belong, trying, but they could do better on security, they could do better on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So the men are failing. But then a lot of times people won't look at how men are failing, they actually choose to look at how women are failing. But besides that, we are going to improve our capacity. Uh, it's also important to mention here that on the marriage bill we got really punished, but 
what we had done was work in the committees. A lot of the work of parliament is not what you see on the floor. In fact, a lot of what you see on the floor is postering. Mm -hmm. A lot more serious work is in the committees. Is actually where you have serious analysis, serious presentations. By the time we come to the floor, that's a gallery. Uh, there's public out there waiting to see. So sometimes women, I think what we are missing, and maybe you, the media and other people will help us, is the skills for the gallery. So the, the, theater, skills, the theater, the theater, the theater we haven't learned, <laughs> and maybe we need to learn that. And when we do theater, again, we get punished. So I fear that if we learn theater and start doing theater, then that won't answer the questions for Kenyans. What we need to do is do things differently, do them well, but let the Kenyans know what we are doing. Let's talk about some of the current uh, issues that, that have kind of cropped up. And right now, the cabinet secretary uh, devolution is under attack uh, and Waigoro you've just said uh, and and some women leaders have come out to say look this is an attack on women in leadership do, do you think that's the case what, I think that that's position? the case I think that in fact because she's one of the most performing ministers she's got a huge docket around her I think like seven ministries together she's there in charge of planning in charge of devolution in charge of youth and women in charge of special uh, programs that's disaster management I mean it's a whole huge docket and she's done extremely well but then the sad thing is instead of being celebrated for having done a good job what you see is that she's become too powerful and so she needs to be tamed. the word arrogant always does so come up for women lack, with lack of consultation yeah. perhaps yeah but it's, it's just sad so that's why we think that it is targeting on women because if it's performance that they were looking at then she has performed she ought not be asked questions because she has done very well if you look at her docket so do you think that there's a challenge when women enter leadership knowing that this is the environment that you work in mm -hmm. that some additional Siasa training is required so that you know how to manage the human elements uh, mm -hmm. that, that could be a challenge. Yeah, I think that that's going to be important for us. And one of the things that I like, including under our own ministry, is a network of the women leaders. We have the controller of budget who's a woman. We have director in the Kenyan Literature Bureau. We have CSS. Remember, it's not only her. We just recently fought the charity Ngilu battle and just won that one and thought that we had survived. Then soon thereafter, there is the Waiguru battle. And there will be the other women are lined up uh, for serious discussions like this so what we need is a network of women leaders so we get into conversations just like the boys have a boys club that knows how to take care of their own I think the girls now need a girls club that's going to take care of each of our own but on this one of Waigoro we are completely clear that there will be no removal the best club though is performance yes a that is probably the best, club. Club, no, yeah. the best club is to perform <laughs> and for people to say right. on behalf of leadership we, we don't want them touched right. let's talk about how the opposition and 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 uh, the, the, the the Jubilee Coalition work together in Kewapa. How does that operate? That's, it's, it's been a, a legacy that we have found. We actually did find that in the last parliament, although the women leaders were very few, they had no barriers. And if right. you look at, for example, the election of Mother Karua, none of the women leaders spoke to oppose her, even if they weren't going directly to vote for her. So we found that they have a code around how women leaders work across parties, across religions, across regions of this country. So that's the legacy that we want to keep, that when it comes to matters women, it doesn't matter whether you're called or jubilee or whether you come from this part of the country or that part of the country or which religion. We first speak on the same language, we protect each other, but more importantly, we actually work for Kenyans. We are mothers of this country. In fact, the bigger concern for Kewopa wasn't just to save Anne, it was to save a performer. It isn't just to save Charity Ngilu, it is to save a performing woman in office and to make sure that then women gains the ones that we have made in the new dispensation and in the new constitution are not eroded. It was sad when we lost Shalei and lost Nancy Baraza before that. I think that uh, increasingly, uh, as women uh, parliamentarians, we will make sure that uh, we improve our performance. We, of course, audit ourselves. We are also not saying that corrupt women and corrupt uh, leaders be forgiven. And, and we are saying that performing women uh, be allowed to work. But luckily also for some of the men who are joining the, 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 the gender-friendly uh, campaigns, I think the president is very kind to women, the deputy president is very kind to women, the coalition leaders are kind to women. Uh, so that is the sort of effort that we want to see so that you judge me not because I'm a woman, you judge me on my performance. Exactly, because the concern would then be Similarly, you know, we see it with, with tribal affiliations where people say we are under attack yes. and everybody jumps up. And that's a sense I think some people get when, when women leadership come under attack and you're asking, okay, hold on a minute, let's separate the gender issue. Let's separate the tribal issue and look at the facts. I think that's usually an unfair allegation on our part as women because if you isolate, like now if you isolate her, you will isolate her to finish her. So the, the quickest uh, background and the quickest uh, reaction can only come from people who understand what she's going through right now. And then the first uh, such line of defense will be women. And it is indeed true that in our, in our parliaments and in our offices right now, because these efforts are very new, there are still men 
who can't understand that women are actually allowed to come and work. We've been trying to get some money for, for women representatives to get to do some work in the counties so that the people in the counties can fill our role. In my own county, Nyeri, alcohol is a big problem. If I got some little money to set up rehabilitation centers and to set up some work around that, then people would be really happy. But you come to parliament and you find men who say that your work was to come here. You are given an easy uh, slot to come mm. to parliament. Mm. And it's like you're supposed to come and shut up. You're supposed to come here, look nice, be nice. Because you can be threatening. You can yeah. be threatening in, in, in their environment. We are not threatening. What we are saying is the country needs men on one direction and, and women. women on the other direction. That's a really a wholesome country that is moving forward. Right. And this country yeah. has a lot of issues. If we start leaving women behind when we have uh, ethnicity, when we have security questions, when we have really, really many issues that we need to deal with, including an economy that we need to expand. So this expansion can only come by men and women. And we don't want to take over their seats. We just want our space. No, I, I, we, we're soon coming to a close. This weekend, of course, we've seen um, this club action again with Rachel Shebesh and, and, and Sonko. And um, leaders who have been voted in by a, a large masses mm -hmm. of people. It's unexpected. It's disappointing once again to see this. What, how do we ensure that as women leaders we set a bar, a benchmark that is above and beyond the expectations and therefore create an environment for other women leaders and for our male counterparts as well to accept women leadership? Does that question make sense? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's one of the difficult ones because you know, mm -hmm. you know, there are a couple of personal choices there on, on, on you know, going to clubs and all that. But what we also want to see is a country where leaders are allowed to lead and are allowed to live their lives. I think it's also a bit unfair to judge people just because they have a personal life. I think what we want to see with Kenyans, and which is what I would really urge our people, judge us on the public office role. There are hours when we have to be in public office. There are expectations of our public office. If we fail there... I think that you, you need to judge us on that score. But don't judge us on a couple of other personal things that, that, that we do. It's important, but that's not as important as what we do uh, with the public office and in terms also of the new constitution and dignity of office. So I would urge that uh, men and women are judged on the same score, but leaders in this country are really, really put to perform. There can be no other excuse about these things. Thank you so much for joining us and making time. Uh, that was Priscilla Nyokabi, Nyeri County Women Representative, sharing her views with us. Your views are coming in. Keep them coming in. Double